So hey there fellow YouTubers, it's Frank Bush here again. So in today's video, I've had the good people over at LiTime decided that they were going to send me a battery to do a review. So they sent me over one of their new 12 volt, 100 ampere hour mini LifePo 4 batteries, so lithium iron phosphate batteries. And uh, normally they're kind of top of the line, if you will, when it comes to longevity and use and all that stuff. So I'm pleased to receive this and uh, we'll do a full review. I'm going to be in a future video using this battery to do a full build out of like a solar generator. And uh, I just want to do some testing on this to see what the capabilities are of the battery. I know there's lots of other videos out there where they do spec reviews and stuff. You know, guys like Will Prowse has done a fantastic job reviewing this to give all the technical details. But I want to do more of a, you know, hands-on, let's just hook stuff up to it and see what I can run off of this single battery. And uh, see, you know, so when I'm out in the field, I know what level of functionality I can achieve. So I'll shift camera angles here. We'll do the unboxing and we'll see kind of how they package it up and that. And then we'll move through the video, yeah? All right, so first order business, just bust out my trusty pocket knife here. And uh, get into this box and see what we're dealing with. Pretty excited about this. I always like receiving stuff like this when it comes to, you know, batteries and that kind of stuff. Because these guys offer a fairly low cost solution compared to the competition. And I find, like I say, with lithium iron phosphate batteries, it's always high quality stuff. You know, I've, most of the reviews I've seen with any of the lithium iron phosphate batteries tend to be pretty solid. But uh, it seems to come with a fancy little package with some stickers and all sorts of stuff, the product manual and that kind of stuff. So we'll look at that in a bit. But uh, it's also got the post bolts. So we'll open that up and hook that onto the battery and that kind of stuff. But as it goes for the packaging itself, it's, it's top of the line quality. I mean, got good foam insulation and all that kind of stuff to keep it protected. I'll try to keep this in. Let me just check my camera. I'll try to keep this in camera as nicely as I can. But as you can see, it's got nice packaging to it. And the thing I really like about this is it's their mini version, which, you know, I mean, obviously it's still a large battery, but when it comes to using stuff out in the field, smaller is better. And the more power I can get into a small thing that I can carry with me out in the field, the better off I am, you know? So this is the raw battery here. And as you can see, I'll show a nice kind of screenshot of that, of it's the Lifetime Mini. Uh, lithium iron phosphate that's what this life post stands for lithium iron phosphate that's uh, 12.8 volt at 100 ampere hours you know all the enviro stuff and all that kind of stuff but um like I say, there's other people that have kind of cut these open and done full detailed reviews of the circuitry on the inside. I don't want to waste this battery. I want to use it for out in the field. So the more I can kind of keep it as is, the better. So I'll just uh, pop open now. Grab my pocket knife again. Just pop open these little bolts here. Like I say, I do like the quality they shipped it in. Some of the stuff I've received in the past definitely doesn't have this level of quality when it comes to the packaging. So it's always a good sign that, you know, they're on it when it comes to those things. So you got little caps to go on the terminals, you know, red and black for the positive and negative and all that happiness. And it seems fairly straightforward. I'll just pop these out, I think. Oh, they're screw out, I do believe. I don't know, it just pops. But yeah, I always like receiving new stuff like this because I know these batteries, they'll last 10 years of daily use and that kind of stuff. But, you know, normally it's going to be um, calendar life that will end up killing these batteries off before they'll just die. But as you can see, the terminals are easy to just kind of screw into place and that kind of happiness. So I'll only just put those on loosely now. And they give four just in case. So it's always good in that regard of... It might be for bolting to stuff for... I'll have to look at the actual full battery all over it just to make sure that they might be for mounting it or something. But either way, I've got four ba uh, four little, you know, bolts, if you will, in here with the full washers and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just set those there. Just take a little snoop around the packaging. So I'll show you the backside here of the mini edition. Gives you a way to contact them. Caution, risk of fire, explosion, or burns. 
do not short circuit. I know all the basic safety stuff, but generally speaking, I find lithium iron phosphate batteries to be far safer than like a normal lithium ion battery, that these are, are far better in that regard. And as you can see, they give a five year warranty, you know, so it's good that they're kind of offering a good length of warranty and that kind of stuff. But like I say, with good quality lithium iron phosphate batteries, you know, you can use these things over and over again without issue. So I'll stop, like I say, just at this point. Uh, stop just at this point and um, I'll pop open this manual and just take a little snoop on that to see if there's anything that's worth going over in the video. And if not, we'll just move on to actually hooking some things up and testing its capabilities. Um, so yeah, just give me two seconds and we'll kind of shift gears and see where we're at with that. All right, well, there was actually a few different things in here, so I'll just show you of kind of some of their marketing material, if you will. Of, you know, and this is all nice quality stuff. It all looks like it's done on a, a heavy pound paper and, you know, photos are all high gloss and all that kind of stuff. So, but uh, one of the good parts is they show um, all the different products that they have in their line. So if you're interested in kind of picking up, you know, multiple batteries as you move through time, that kind of stuff gives you an idea of what to look for that they offer. And that kind of stuff talks about their certificates. And then it talks about um, scaling up with uh, home systems and stuff and hooking the batteries together so that you can use, you know, the batteries either in parallel or in series and that kind of stuff. But, you know, they give an example of 16 times the 12 volt, 200 amp your hours. They have 200 amp BMS batteries in a four parallel, four series configuration. So, you know, they talk about the different specs of kind of if you wanted to kind of get this up to a larger scale where you were running good components of your house or off grid and that kind of stuff. So now it's fairly minor. They got some funky little stickers that you can uh, throw in your vehicle and that kind of stuff. So, you know, those are always kind of cool. I like supporting the lithium ion phosphate world. And this here is the uh, looks like the full manual. So and it walks through all the different operating, but uh, you know, talks about popping the caps out and putting the bolts in and all that kind of happiness, right? And obviously, I just put the little plastic caps on here. I'll just shift this back for a second. I just put the little plastic caps on the top, but you know, obviously, you want to have your red on your positive and your black on your negative, that kind of stuff, right? So fairly straightforward. I mean, it, it's a battery. To me, it's going to be more, uh, you know, it's simple to know what a battery is and what it does, but it's more in the regards of I'm interested to see. Like, can I cook food with this out in the field, you know, with ease, run my cigarette lighter adapters? Can I, and I'll step it all the way up to the point and we'll hook on like a 2000 watt inverter and see if we can get a microwave running as part of this video. Because generally speaking, a single battery this size um, isn't strong enough or doesn't put out enough amps, if you will, to be able to power a microwave. So it gets more complicated if I wanted to throw a microwave in the back of the truck and that. Normally I'd have to have two of these, but um, from everything I've heard in the amount of power output that this can do, um, I should be able to run a microwave, but we'll, we'll test all that out. You know, that'll be to the extreme level, if you will, but we'll test that all out as part of this battery review, yes? So, and then it just walks through a bunch of the, you know, charging, aspects to things and the voltages and all that kind of stuff it covers all that kind of business right then it talks about you know the recommended charging current at uh, 20 amps the battery will fully um, charge in around five hours and if you're charging at 50 amps the battery will be fully charged in about uh, two hours to 97 percent so you know i always recommend charging these at a slower rate than the maximum just because it's healthier on the batteries for the longevity in that but um but these are still designed where as far as i know it to be i could be mistaken it'll mention it in the specs here but these cover like five or six thousand cycles so when you take that out to daily use you're talking about like 10 years of daily use so these batteries can really see you know good solid performance as you move through time generally speaking most lithium ion phosphate batteries are like that and then it's talking about inverter settings and that kind of stuff but like i say we'll get on to the practical aspect but it is nice i mean they put it in a nice little plastic package and all that kind of stuff you know kind of groovy if you're into having stickers on your vehicle and stuff and you know all that kind of stuff and give you an idea if you wanted to scale things up to kind of you know running stuff for off-grid or you know kind of switching your house over to solar and that kind of stuff but you know generally speaking to me it's more of just let's do some real world function testing on this battery see what its capacity is like i say in a future uh, video i'm gonna 
drop this into like an ammo box, a larger ammo box or something along that lines where I can bring this out into the field and use it. So that'll be, you know, this, this battery will be in a future video as well, showing me, you know, doing all of that kind of stuff. But like I say, I'll shift camera angles here. I'll stop, you know, rambling about the basics of the, the user manuals and those types of things. Then we'll start hooking stuff up and see how this works. Yeah. All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is just check to see what the voltage is at when it comes to the battery. Yeah. Because I know I had it sitting for a couple of weeks here. I had other projects on the go that will be up onto the YouTube channel as we move through time. But one way or the other, let's just see where this voltage is at. So we're sitting at about 13.1 volts. So I know that's higher than the 12.8 stated here. And to give you an idea, lithium iron phosphate, you know, generally you can have it max out at about 14.4 volts or it goes all the way down to 10 volts. So to give you an idea, sitting at 13.1 volts right now, this thing's about 40% full. So they probably shifted it like half full, which is ideal for when it comes to, you know, the battery likes to sit around 50% with lithium iron phosphate. It doesn't like to sit at 100% and doesn't like to sit at zero. So they probably shifted it at, uh, or uh, sent it off to me at about 50%. And then just because it sat for a bit, it's lost a bit of charge, yeah? But uh, that should still be ample enough to do the testing that we want to do. You know, uh, normally when the battery starts to get uh, full, you're looking at about 13.4, 13. 13.5. 13. That generally is when you're going to see that it's like, you know, 100% full and that kind of stuff. And when it gets down to below about 12.9 or so, 12.8, I don't normally use it any further below that because that's when it gets down to about 15% full. And when it comes to lithium iron phosphate batteries, generally so that they last a really, really long time, I, I don't want to use them... Um, you know, my the range, if you will, the working range I like to use them is between about 90% full and about 15% full. And that, that ensures that I get massive amounts of cycles out of it, you know, and that these things will last for years and years. But like I say, right now it's sitting at 13.1, which is about 40% full. And like I say, we should be able to test the microwave and that kind of stuff on this and just see kind of where it's at, right? But first order business, we'll start to test a few of the smaller loads that I would normally want to have when it comes to out in the field. And then we'll kind of step up and move through things and see to what level I can power this off a single battery before I would need to have two of these. These, you know and hopefully we reach being able to power everything and that way you don't have to have two separate batteries out in the field I can go with just one yeah so let me uh, shift camera angles here I'll grab a few of my kind of testing components to see what what I'll easily be able to run and then uh, we'll move up through the ranks all right so the first thing I'm gonna end up testing is because you know if you watch previous videos of mine I always love having a coffee when I'm out in the field you know, so first order business, I'm just going to take this little uh, immersion heater that I have. You know, these are only cheap. They come off of uh, eBay and that kind of stuff. And I got my little coffee cup here, my little Frank Bush coffee cup. I'm just going to pop that on and then hook these on to the positive and negative terminals. Yeah, so nothing to it. Just hook these on. And uh, I'll cut back in a few minutes and show you that this is working you know as expected and that kind of stuff but generally speaking this should only take about 10 minutes now this is kind of one of the lowest levels that i would really drive when it comes to um you know loads that i put on this thing uses about 12 volts at about 10 amps to give you an idea so but i've got a message coming in so i'll cut while this is getting ready yeah sorry about cutting scenes there my kid was doing a sleepover but as you can see here now the bubbles are already starting to rise up off this little immersion heater. We're about six or seven minutes after I initially hooked it up. So it's good in that regard. And I was expecting this to work without issue, right? But it's one of those things of, to give you an idea, off of a single battery this size, you could end up running this immersion heater for about 10 hours before you need to charge it. So, you know, if you're just wanting to use it for light load, like making coffees when you're out in the field and that kind of stuff, you know, um... It's a no-brainer. This thing's really easy and able to run that without issue, right? So, needless to say, I'll just do my old faithful pinky test. And yeah, yeah, that's getting hot enough where I don't want to keep my finger in it. So, I'm going to stop. I'm just going to throw my, you know, coffee bits into there and uh, make this coffee. And then we'll move on to the next thing to test, yeah? All right, so I got my coffee together. Always critical, you know, especially in some of my videos. But uh, needless to say, pop that off. 
less than 10 minutes, it's hot enough for, it was burning the mouth out of me, right? To give you an idea. And uh, if you watch previous videos of mine, you'll know that I prefer a lot of 12 volt units when I'm out in the back country um, for efficiency sake more than anything. So I've got a little cigarette lighter adapter that I can just hook onto a battery here as well. And it's got a built-in fuse into it. Now this unit can run up to about 15 amps or so. So it gets a little hotter than the immersion heater, if you will, when it comes to the amount of amps it's gonna draw off this battery. But I'll just hook that up on now. And hopefully that's all clear on the camera where I think they just attaching the little red to red, black to black kind of business. It's just got little rings here that I strap on, right? Nothing complex. But stepping up to having a cigarette lighter adapter kind of starts to open up the doors for me. And like I say, we'll go up to AC inverters and everything off this, but just to show you some of the functionality that I can get off this. So, you know, right now, anything that I wanted to plug into a cigarette lighter adapter, it's easy enough, right? Then I'll just grab a, I'll just grab a small unit that I have sitting over here. And you can get these all the way up to about 150 watts, but in like just small little inverters that uh, are designed and I've shown this in previous videos but I can see my green lights lit up it tells me this unit's running and so you know if I wanted to plug in a small light or a shaver and that kind of stuff um, I think this unit's 75 watts yeah so anything up to about 75 watts um, this unit will be able to handle without issue but I'm just going to pop that off and in previous videos I've shown like using my cooking pots and that kind of stuff so I'm going to turn around and hook one of those up and just get myself a, a pot of soup going and that kind of stuff like I've done in previous videos and just show that yeah you can do that with this kind of stuff without issue you know like I say these aren't this isn't putting a strain really on this battery at all either right now I'm only drawing at best about 15 amps so these are minor loads but it gives you an idea that capacity of and I'll talk about you know how long you can cook for and all that kind of stuff right just off of using a single one of these batteries if it was fully charged yeah so let me shift uh, camera angles here let me grab one of my cooking bits and we'll move on to the next scene yeah all right so I just grab one of my little 12 volt cooking pots so I, I talk about these in full detail in previous videos. So if you're interested in knowing the technology I'm working with here in more detail, go back and watch one of those previous videos where I talk about uh, 12 volt cooking and all that kind of stuff, cooking off grid, if you will. But uh, like I say, initially we hooked on that cigarette lighter adapter, right? So I could plug in any device, but one of the good parts is this cooking pot has a cigarette lighter adapter to it, you know? So it's really simple. I simply just plug that in, Light turns on, lets me know what's going. So I've just uh, opened up a can of, um, I've got some beef stew here. So I opened up a can of beef stew, stew off grid, or off camera, sorry. Now oh, let me grab my spoon. I'm sitting out in the cool of my garage, so the fats have congealed in the can a bit, but I figured I'd use this because you know there's meat and potato and it's kind of thicker and all that kind of happiness, right? So. I'll just put that in, give you an idea. It should be about 20 minutes, half an hour or so. So I'm just going to go add a bit of water into this can, top up this uh, stew. I'll throw the lid on it. And to give you an idea, it should be about half an hour. But uh, hopefully we'll be able to cook a meal off using this battery as its primary power source without issue. Yeah. So give me two seconds and I'll switch scenes. So like I say, this is a super simple setup. You know, if you hooked up a solar panel with a charge controller to charge this battery back up, this is probably one of the most basic ways that you can turn around and get off-grid capacity to be able to, you know, make yourself hot coffee. I'll just put the lid on this, you know, and uh, cook off a bit of food and that kind of stuff. So as you can see, it's all really simple. And this is all just, you know, cigarette lighter adapter. To give you an idea, to pick up one of these cigarette lighter adapter units, I got one of those off... I think it was eBay for like 15 20 bucks right there's nothing to it you know it's really just um, getting the solar panels and stuff hooked up to put power back into this and I've talked about that in full detail in previous videos and I'll probably end up hooking up um, a solar charge controller and stuff later on in in the video potentially depending on how long this video ends up being but uh, like I say I'll just let this go it normally takes anywhere 20 minutes half an hour or so to bring that up to a simmer just take a sip off my coffee here Hmm. Yeah, that's still hot. But uh, I'll just let this go for 20 minutes, half an hour or so, just to cook it off and show you it's got the capacity to kind of cook food and stuff off this battery without issue. 
but you know it's as expected these are light loads this is really a minimalist setup for me if i wanted to just grab a few cables throw it in you know with this size setup you know i'll shift it up a bit just to kind of shift you back and see if we can get it all you know this kind of size setup within reason is enough that I have the ability to have some creature comforts when I'm off grid with just a couple cables. Like I say, I've got that immersion heater where I can turn around and, you know, make myself hot coffees. And then having a pot like this, I've got a few different variants of this, little ovens and that kind of stuff. But all of this stuff, this battery is able to run without issue. And to give you an idea, um, from dead to full, or sorry, full to dead, when it comes to how much cooking time I'd be able to get off of a single charge of this, um, you're looking at about eight hours, maybe nine hours or so. And so, you know, it, at half an hour uh, a meal to heat up, you know, this could last you multiple days before you'd have to recharge that battery a single time, right? So it's really good in that regard of, like I say, if I've got some solar panels and a charge controller with me and I'm off grid, it doesn't take much more than this setup to make it that I have endless power and am able to cook food and stuff for an indefinite period of time but I'll stop rambling I'll let this go off and you know do its simmering cook business and uh, I'll cut back to show you when it's pretty well there yeah all right fellow youtubers so it's been about 25 minutes now or so as you can see we're getting a simmer happening on there so when it comes to using this out in the field I'll easily be able to and make myself a hot meal and that kind of stuff right which is always critical when you're out in cold environments and that kind of stuff you don't want to piss around you want to have things be simple be able to get some hot foods in you and that kind of stuff no just give it a bit of stir and let it go for another few more minutes but the amount of power that i used here was minimal to give you an idea let's just put the lid back on that as it comes back up now so to give you an idea this battery holds about 1280 watts worth of energy and for cooking this meal it's taken about 60 maybe 80 of that you know so it's it's really a small amount it's an inconsequential amount in that regard of i could do what i've done here probably about 15 16 times or so give or take um, before this battery if it was full would drop all the way down to dead so it's really good in that regard of like I say, real simple. I'll stop now off camera. I'll go and eat this because, you know, I hate it when I see YouTubers just eating on camera. But I'll go off and, uh, um, you know, finish this off, clean up the pot and stuff. And we'll move on to like uh, using AC power and an inverter and that kind of stuff and show you the level that we can run when it comes to... I've got a large inverter, so I can run just about anything. But I'll show you kind of the level of running stuff that we can do off of this single battery now um, with AC as well, yeah? All right, so now that I've made off my coffee and, and my lunch and that kind of stuff, I've got my voltmeter back here now. And I'm just going to turn around and touch that back to the terminals again. See what the voltage is at for this battery. So you can see 13.04. Hopefully the camera's picking that up okay. So... You know, if the voltage dropped by a little bit, to give you an idea, that's somewhere between about 5 and 10% of the uh, power consumed that was in this battery. Then, like I say, to give you a kind of an idea, you know, as a general rule of thumb when it comes to lithium iron phosphates, you know, if it's down close to 13 volts, you're sitting at about 30% capacity. And if it was at 13.1, which is what we started with, it was closer to 40. So, you know, I'm going to ballpark and say somewhere between 5 and 10% of the capacity dropped to make that meal off, yeah? But like I say, I'll shift gears now. I'll hook on the AC inverter and we'll start to attach larger loads to this that'll draw more off this battery and see what level of, you know, productivity we can get out of having just a single battery. Okay, so for the next step, I'm going to hook up. I've got a 2000 watt inverter here. So what it does is it turns the DC power that comes off the battery into AC power like you plug into the wall. So I got multiple, you know, plugins that I can use here, yeah. So it's really simple when it comes to hooking these up. Now, when it comes to small inverters, you know, if it's anything below say about a thousand watts or so, you don't have to take this step, but what ends up happening when you're using the larger inverters is they have what's called capacitors in them that hold a significant amount of charge when you first hook them up. And if they're not powered up at all, there'll be a rush of current that goes from the battery into it. Then you can actually do damage to these terminals and stuff when you hook them up. 
So just because of the way the wires are sitting here, I'm going to take this battery and flip it the other way, just so the black's closer to the black and the red's closer to the red. But I'm just going to hook on my black here. And you can say this is a big inverter for the size of these terminals. It'll work, but we're starting to get right to the threshold of... So I just want to make sure that that's connected on the negative really well. Now, before I go hooking on the positive, if I hook this on, I'd see a big spark that would jump off it as those capacitors rush to fill up, yeah? So in order to stop that from happening, I've got this little unit, which is a resistor. You know, I find them at um, like hardware stores for automotive and that kind of stuff. They're only cheap, so. But to give you an idea, I'm just gonna touch the one end to the positive here. <clears throat> and I know I really should put some clips or something on this, but such is life. So I'm going to kind of touch the one end to the positive here. And then the other end, I'm just going to touch up to the positive on the battery. And because it's the resistor, it'll kind of slow down the speed in which the capacitors inside this inverter fill up. And I didn't, you, you didn't hear a big spark or see a big flash or any of that business. It's because I'm using this resistor. So I just let that sit for a good 20, 30 seconds or so, just to make sure the capacity is, or the capacitors in the inverter are fully charged. So that should be enough now within reason. And now when it comes to hooking on my positive, I can turn around and hook that on now without being concerned in any way about it throwing a spark or anything. And it's really, the sparks can get so hot, they can literally melt these um, terminal bolts that you're using. So you wanna be mindful if you're using, like I say, if you're using large inverters, you wanna be mindful of taking that extra step just so you don't do damage to anything along the way. And it's really as simple as that. I just hook the red to the positive, you know, the black to the negative. I now have this inverter that it's running power. You heard the beep, so it's on and functioning. So I'll shift camera angles and we'll start plugging in some loads and we'll talk about how long you could use them and the kind of power draw they're doing and that kind of stuff, yeah? So let me just shift things around a little bit and we'll get that as the next scenes. Okay, so like I say, just they kind of rearrange things. This inverter, as you can see, is a fair bit larger than the battery itself. And that's really just to handle the large amounts of power that are flowing through it. When you look at these cables, they're fairly significant, yeah? But uh, what I have here now, I've showed this in previous videos, this is a little 400 watt space heater now. So I'll just plug that in. And that has to be set down on a surface to work. Hopefully you're hearing that. I'll see if I can drop the camera angle here and uh, get you a better angle. So you can see a little red light on here where, and it's throwing out the heat. So it's able to run a 400 watt heater. Now to give you an idea, like I say, this battery sitting at full, um, it can hold about 1,280 watts worth of energy into it. And this is using about 400 watts of that per hour. So you'd only be able to run a device like this for about three hours from full to dead before it would run out. But you can see the battery doesn't have any issue in running that. It's just the capacity of the batteries then. And normally when you're wanting to turn electrical into heat, it's not ideal to do space heaters and that stuff off of electrical to begin with. And if you've watched previous videos of mine, I talk about solar thermal and those types of things. They tend to be far more efficient, but as you can see, easily doable. It's not tripping the inverter. The battery's not having a hard time throwing the load. So I'm pleased that the battery can run this. Now we'll step up to the next stage up and we'll kind of walk up the amount of wattage until we see if this battery trips, right? So let me just grab another item. We'll shift gears and we'll plug that in. But as you can see, and that's hot coming off there of you know that space that's that would heat the space for like I say about three hours without issue but uh needless to say i'll unplug this because i don't want to waste all the energy within the battery and we'll switch up to the next level of kind of technology that i would see running off grid yeah all right so as we test this battery further and further we're going to step up now like i say the last little heating unit that was about 400 watts and you could use it for about three hours yeah to give you an idea now i've got this little stove element you know just a little apartment bachelor suite stove element or whatever and hopefully the camera's picking this up this will use a thousand watts yeah so it's using substantially more so, so to give you an idea from 
you know, full battery to dead battery, you'd only be able to run this for a little more than an hour, yeah? So it's one of those things where I wouldn't necessarily be doing that that often. And, uh, you know, it's good enough if I wanted to uh, get up to the higher temperatures and that kind of stuff. But as you can see, the both lights light up without issue. Hopefully the camera's picking that up okay. Where, let me just cover the light. Yeah, you can see it better when I shade the lighting. I tried to add a light in to make it that things were brighter in my videos, but get a bit of smoke coming off it. Must have spilled something on it the last time. But it's not that this unit is malfunctioning anyway. It's just when I cleaned it last time, I must have left a little bit of something on there or whatever. But I can feel that's piping hot. Now, like I say, if this battery was full, I'd be able to run this for the better part of an hour or so, right? But it'll run that without issue. You know, this uh, inverter can handle up to 2000 watts. So it's really just the capacity of the battery for how long I can run this thing for. And now, like I say, I'll, I'll just drop that down now. Now, like I say, and you can see it just turned off the element. So it'll it'll run this load without without any significant issue, right? But I just don't want to drain down the batteries because we started at, you know, roughly 40% or so, right? So, and I want to just kind of test the capacity. But it'll it'll run this unit without issue. The nothing's gonna trip or anything. I'll turn it on low just so it does it is on. And whatever I spilt on that element is burned away. So we're good in that regard. But I can feel the heat pumping off this, right? So you know, this would be the equivalent of like I say, a stove element at home. So you can get this kind of level of capacity, but you definitely want to have it where you know if you're stepping up to this kind of level for any significant length of time when you're off grid because of the capacitance of the battery you know it can only hold like I say a thousand you know 280 watts of energy within reason in about that that um you'd only be able to run this for an hour so you'd want to move up to just stacking these batteries additionally so you know potentially you could have three or four of these batteries stacked and then um, wired together in parallel so that you know you're working within a 12 volt system in this regard I mean you can wire these up in series and go 48 volts and switch up your inverters and that kind of stuff it's a lot cheaper on the wiring and that kind of stuff but because I go out into the field a lot I like sticking to the 12 volt because I can run the other devices like the cigarette lighter adapters and stuff without needing any extra stuff I can just hook them straight onto the terminals and it's really easy for me right so I don't have to kind of muck about too much but I know if you're doing kind of more rigid systems where you're not moving that stuff around you know they're just static systems moving up to like a 48 volt system might be a more ideal choice for you because of the cost of the wiring and everything else but you know there's other youtubers out there that they'll talk about that in full length i'm not going to discuss that in this video but i just wanted to show you that yes i can get things like stove elements running you know off of this single battery which is good some of the batteries i've used in the past don't have the amperage output to even be able to drive something like this so it's good to see that using a single battery i can at least achieve that kind of pull without you know causing any work or you know wear and tear on the battery and that kind of stuff and normally the lithium iron phosphates can handle you know significantly high loads for a long period of time so it's good in that regard of to give you an idea this unit was pulling about 90 amps so and and as far as i understand it to be this unit can handle an output of close to 150 don't quote me on that um, i'd have to go back and read those specs again but that's one of the reasons why we're doing this review is rather than just going through the numbers of what it says in a spec sheet so let's actually try it out see that it works for real and that i'm getting the productivity that i'm expecting before i take this out in the field yeah so let me kind of shift things a bit we'll step up to the final example where i'll use my full uh, microwave that I've got sitting in my house. I'll go yard it off the wall and we'll drag it over here. We'll put it in. I'll run the microwave for a good five minutes or so, you know, to make sure that it's not going to trip after the first, you know, 30 seconds or a minute or any of that business and see if we can't use that microwave out in the field. You know, if you get up to the point where you're able to run microwaves and stuff, you're only going to be able to run them for say half an hour, 45 minutes at max off of a battery, you know, a single battery like this. But having that level of capacity is good to know right it's understanding where the threshold of your gear is before you go taking out into the field but all in all so far i'm already liking this um, lie time mini it's uh, i like the compact design and all that kind of stuff and it seems to be outputting well so let me shift gears i'll go grab the microwave and we'll move on to the next scene yeah all right well i dragged my microwave over here 
Now this is about a 1500 watt microwave. It's like 1550, I, I believe. I'll, I'll look at the back, but if I'm wrong, I'll correct it. I just don't want to flip it around in the camera and stuff. But either way, now normally I wouldn't go hooking up microwaves to just a single 100 ampere hour battery, just to give you an idea. So I'm seeing that it turned on for its most basic. But uh, yeah, normally I would want to hook this up to two of those just so i'm not drawing on the amps too hard and a lot of batteries if you just try to run it off one it simply wouldn't even turn this microwave on in a running mode if you will you might get the lights come up for the clock and stuff but uh one way or the other i know my microwave is not spotless i'm a bachelor so you know such is life there's some messes that shouldn't be messes and if i had a woman to straighten me out they'd straighten me out i'm sure but needless to say, I've got a bowl of water all set in there and bring it up to speed. I don't want to cook off any more food because, you know, Jenny Craig would be calling after I've already eaten the stew and the coffee and all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to run this, like I say, this 1500 watt microwave now. I'm going to run this for five minutes to see if I trip the BMS in the battery or, or you know, any of that business. This inverter should be able to handle it without issue. So it's primarily going to be putting the load on this battery. Now it's either going to, you know, pass the grade or it's going to fail. And I know I'm drawing this battery down pretty hard and uh, potentially I'll look at snipping one of my little solar controllers off and showing you how you can hook on a solar controller at the end of this just to recharge this back up if you were off grid. But right now it's all about this battery and just testing the performance of it. Yeah. So I'll put that, like I say, at a five minutes now. And if you watch previous videos where I ran a microwave out of the back of a truck, I did it where I had two batteries that were the equivalent of that in capacity. So I'm going to be surprised if this works for the full five minutes, but we'll run it and see, right? So the fact it even is running it at this point in time is pleasing to me. That's a good sign that uh, this battery is putting out... I'm going to ballpark probably close to about 150 amps right now. It's throwing out a lot of power to this inverter. You know, to be able to run microwaves and those types of things, they're really high power draw items. And like I say, I've got the timer set here for four minutes and change. I'll even try to, you know, left on it. I'll even try to bring this down so you can see the timer and we can see if it trips. It's going to be difficult to kind of give this justice, but without making a mess of the camera work, but bear with me if you watch previous bushcraft videos you see me mucking about with stuff like this out in the field all the time right it's just the nature of how I do my recordings I'm a little bit of a savage that way but uh, try to bring that down closer so we can see now I know it's just kind of sitting on a clock watching it go but one way or the other this battery is holding it for the first over a minute now so that's always a good sign I'm gonna grab my temperature gauge and see if the terminals on the battery are getting hot at all I've got a little gauge that'll tell me, you know, if anything on the battery is getting hot or, you know, any of that business. Because I know this is throwing a lot of power. So let me just, like I say, while that's running, we're down to three and a half now, right? And I'll just shift over back over to this battery now. and shift this up a bit. And I'll just do a little scan on some of the terminals and stuff and see. So that terminal is still sitting at room temperature, right? It's not even, not even making it like it's a load on this. Check the body of the battery. The body of the battery still seems cool. I'm not seeing any hot spots on the battery or something, you know, any of that business. So, and to give you an idea for the Fahrenheit people. Let's see if I can switch that over. You know, 70, 70 Fahrenheit, give or take. And um, I was expecting those terminals to start to turn a little warm, but... I'm not seeing any of that. They're all still just sitting cool at room temperature. So we're two and a half minutes into running this microwave. Now this battery's capacitance, I'll switch it back to Celsius for the rest of the world. I just don't know why it's not it's shifting easy. There we go. So we're still sitting in the you know low 20s for Celsius, which is phenomenal for the battery to be running with this many amps and stuff. And like I say, it doesn't feel warm in any place really. Those terminals don't even feel hot. It's able to run this without issue. That's really, really pleasing to me. I'm really impressed 
that this battery is able to do this at all at this range you know and to give you an idea running a microwave you're only gonna be able to run a microwave from full to dead on a single battery like this for maybe half an hour 45 minutes but microwaves are powerful you know you don't normally need to use them for half hours at a time right so if you had something like this off-grid where you're only using it for three four minutes to go and that kind of thing you know this could work for you. This is really the smallest setup I've seen to the point where I'm able to power a full microwave. And as you can see, you know, we're almost, we're almost down to five minutes deep in running this microwave. I'm sure that water in there is getting close to a boil if it's not added already. <coughs> and, uh, but yeah, we'll just let it go right to the end to make sure it doesn't trip or anything else and that the battery's able to handle it, yeah? We'll do another test to see. No, still seeing cool temperatures off the terminals and all that stuff, so. Yeah, I'm really, really impressed. Lie time has done an impressive job in that regard. Of, they don't feel, oh, this is starting to feel a tiny bit warm, but it's still cooler than like skin temperature, if you will. And I'm not feeling any warm spots on the battery at all. But like I say, that's drawing close to 150 amps worth of power within reason, so. I'm, I'm just um, speechless. It's performing really, really, really well. Like I say, I've hooked other single batteries up to this, like sealed lead acids and other stuff. It'll run the microwave for about 30 seconds, then it craps. So this is the first time I've had it where the battery was able to handle this lower level of power output without failing. So, you know, I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with that. And it's really simple. All it is is the battery to the inverter and out to the microwave, right? Like I say, for the, getting the power in, it'll be a different matter. You're gonna to wanna to hook on a solar charge controller. There's two main types of those. There's an MPPT, which I believe Lightime might be coming out with soon in uh, the Canadian market, which is where I'm at. And uh, there's uh, uh, PWMs. So yeah, that ran the full five minutes. Let's just see here. Yeah, I can already feel the warmth and steam coming off of that water. And that was a good couple cups of water in here. I barely even want to touch it because it's piping hot. But that's pretty well out of boil. So that's a win in my books. This battery's done really, really well for itself. But yeah, back to the... So there's two types. There's the PWM, the pulse width modulation, and there's the MPPT. The MPPT solar controllers are really uh, a superior product. They're more efficient. They're a little costlier, but when you hook a solar panel onto them, you get more power out of the exact same panel using the MPPT than you would the uh, PWM. But uh, like I say, I'll check how long this video has gotten to at this point in time, and then maybe I'll just show hooking up a solar charge controller and, and uh, a solar panel up to this setup so you can see how you can get power in if you're off-grid and that kind of stuff. But I'm impressed for that single battery to be able to run my microwave for five minutes without dropping or anything else and you can see the steam coming off and hopefully the camera's catching that that thing's piping hot man so and my coffee's almost done so maybe i'll just use that to make myself another coffee because you know it can never hurt having another coffee right so let me shift camera angles and uh i'll kind of walk through getting power into this if you were off grid and that kind of stuff yeah okay so unfortunately i didn't have a solar charge controller that was not strapped to another you know thing that i've got on the go right now but uh in essence the solar charge controllers for people that you know haven't watched previous videos and give you an idea this little box right here i've just got it strapped onto the side of this crate so i can't move it easily but in essence what ends up happening is when you've got solar panels sitting out in the field yeah they produce a voltage at about 18 or to 20 22 in around that range now the batteries like I was saying earlier, this battery only floats at a range between, say, 12 and 14 volts, you know, within reason. So the voltage coming off the solar panels is too high. So what these little charge controllers do is they take that voltage and they drop it down and they increase the amps going into the battery. Then they kind of monitor the battery to figure out where the battery's at. You have different settings for different types of batteries. So there's sealed lead acid, there's lithium ion, uh, you know, lithium iron phosphates, those types of things that you can have as settings that, uh, that you can toggle through. And really there's two wires that go off. Hopefully the camera's picking this up, right? There's two wires that go off and these are what they call MC4 connectors. Then they allow you to hook your solar panel 
to this box and then there's a red and black that come off this and they go on to your battery and they you know charge your battery up using the solar panels energy that it's capturing yeah and like i say i'd show a full example to the the lie time battery that they sent me i just don't have one of those units freely available and i'll shift camera angles and i'll kind of talk about what i want to do with this lie time battery i'm really really impressed with it it's a good battery but uh i've got a little portable solar generator that i built and I made a video on that, but I never managed to get it up on YouTube because uh, the files got corrupted on a bad SD card. So I'm going to stop and kind of open up the box and show you and kind of walk you through what I want to do. And I think the solar charge controller in there is a little more free floating so I can show it to you a bit better. So let me just shift camera angles and I'll start to wrap this video up and talk about, you know, the full plans of what I'm going to do with this battery. Yeah. Okay, so like I say, this is the solar generator I built out and I, I really wanted to show a full video on this because I've got the same kind of stuff where I can come out to AC wall power here, I can come out to USB and cigarette lighter adapter and I've got an on off switch and all that kind of stuff that sits on here, but uh, the battery that I got um was poor quality and uh, it was a lithium iron phosphate battery but um it just it was made by a bad company i, I don't even want to kind of go there you know i don't want to speak negatively of them but it was a substandard product they said it would be a brand new item and it turns out that they sent me this old battery that barely had any life in it so needless to say even though i like this build out and i really wanted to show the full video on this unfortunately the sd card got corrupted but i'll pull out the solar charge controller sitting in here and let's see if i can catch that on camera a bit i might have to move you over so this is just a little cheap pwm solar charge controller now i got this from renergy um i've been talking with lytime that potentially they might be sending me one of their mppt charge controllers down the road we'll see how that all goes as we move through time depending on how they like the review and how much traction the video gets for this one but this is the kind of simple little units like i say you can get small ones that are only about this size they're anywhere from say twenty dollars for a pwm cheapy right up to you could pay a hundred you know two hundred dollars for one that's a little bit bigger than this that can handle a little bit more um amps and that kind of stuff but uh i do want to kind of pull all the components that i have in this crate um out and use those and do a rebuild where like i say this battery was just bunk i don't even want to show the label or anything on it it, it really is just unfortunate but uh one way or the other um i'll do that as a full you know feature video but i think that this box that i built everything out in um is just a little small you know when i can step this back a bit when i compare it to the size of the the battery that uh, lightime sent me you know it's um, i don't even think i could cram that in there if i wanted to i think it's just a little bit too tall and that kind of stuff so i'll, I'll shift up to getting a different kind of box like this but a bit bigger and then <laughs> i want to use this in here where I can use this when I go out into the backcountry all the way up to the point as we've now proven today in this video that this battery has a strong potential to be able to run microwaves or anything else I want and having in a little compact complete kit like this where I've got all my outputs and stuff with little waterproof stuff it allows me to go into the backcountry confidently without worrying about you know moisture ingress or any of that kind of stuff you know but uh like I say I'll shift camera here so that was just give you a little prelude to kind of what's coming in the future I do have it set up where and here i'll just shift this around to show you kind of what i was talking about when it comes to hooking onto the solar panels so that little solar charge controller just has two little connectors like this where it's you know male and female and that's what i hook on to the solar panels so it's really easy i literally just plug the solar panels right in this and away it goes or i've also wired this up where i can plug it into like wall power and charge it that way yeah so like i say that'll be a future video where hopefully i'll be using this live time battery as a replacement for this and stepping it up so i can just run more powerful things when i'm out in the field but uh like i say i'll stop i'll wrap it up and kind of make my closing comments about this lifetime battery okay and i'll just do one last showing of the voltage because i know you know we hit the microwave and we had the burners running and all that business 
And as you can see, we're down below 13 volts now. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. It's now 12.98. So, you know, within reason, we used about another 10%, you know, of that battery just to run the microwave and, you know, show you that the hot plate would run and stuff. And uh, I didn't do extensive kind of um, stuff when it came to the little heater and running the little stove element hot plate there because I knew the microwave was going to use way more power than either one of those. So it was like, yeah, if I can run the microwave, I can run all of it, right? But I definitely wanted to step up through it just to see what level of functionality I can reach. But when it comes to this, you know, lie time battery, I mean, to me, this is a solid win. You know, as far as I know it to be, I'd have to go and look at the exact numbers. These guys sell kind of on the cheaper end of the lithium ion phosphate battery spectrum too. Here, I'll just spin this around for you and make sure you get a good look at it. And of, uh, you know, these guys are on the, the cheaper end when it comes to the cost, but it's definitely not cheap in quality. I'm impressed with everything I've seen about it, you know. I've watched a few other videos where people did more technical reviews to see the exact details of, you know, the amps and all that kind of stuff thing and overcharge protection and all that. The only one that was kind of, generally speaking, is any concern to me is, first off, can I run all the things I want to run? And then does it have low temperature protection in it or not? You know, and that's not really a showstopper for me. And for people that aren't savvy with that stuff, what that means is um, when the battery drops below about zero degrees Celsius, you know, um, it's not good to charge lithium iron phosphate batteries in um, below those temperatures. It can do damage to the battery. So, you know, it's, it's one of those things where they do have, um, and I believe Lytime puts some out as well, where they've got little internal heaters in them that allow you to kind of charge the battery when it goes down below freezing, you know, low temperature protection and all that is really the circuitry designed to shut down the battery's ability to take a charge if it gets too cold. You know, in the environment I'm in, it's not really a critical aspect of the things I do. Um, I live in a climate, I'm on the west coast of Canada, so I live in a very mild climate. It's like the California of Canada, if you will, where the temperatures don't drop below freezing very often here, if at all, in a year. You know, I might see one, two days out of a year that, uh, that that's going to occur. And I'm just mindful of the reality of don't charge my gear when it gets down below freezing. And I just know that within myself, right? You know, or, or if I do charge it, make sure I warm the battery up and it's in a temperature controlled environment before I charge it and take it off into the field. So, it's, so that's really kind of a mood point for me. If I was using this out in the field, um, you know, all year long and all that kind of stuff, then I knew that there was potentially multiple days in a colder environment. Um, I'd have to be far more mindful of, you know, is this low temperature protected, um, uh, which I believe all of them are. Um, but it's one of those things where it's not really a critical factor in my lens, you know, uh, in, in my environment, it just doesn't really, it just doesn't really pertain. But if you were living in say Alaska or something like that, where you knew you were having, you know, uh, months of, you know, cold weather and all that kind of stuff, you definitely want to look at the, the versions of these batteries that have the, uh, you know, um, internal heaters built into them to, to allow you to do charging in colder environments. But as it goes for this mini, you know, it's, uh, I give it a 10 out of 10, really. It's a solid battery. I'm impressed that it could run the microwave. Um, as I just showed in that uh, crate that I had with the solar charger where it was strapped to the side of the crate and I showed in the previous scenes there, I'm running two batteries that have about the equivalent of this in capacity, but uh, running an individual one of those batteries isn't strong enough to run the microwave. I've tried before and it failed. So it's good to see that this battery just by itself can do that job. It lets me know that the BMS, the battery management system they have in it is really top shelf, you know? And like I say, there's guys like uh, Will Prowse out there and stuff um, that have ripped these batteries apart and looked at them and saw they were all good quality for when it comes to the wiring and all the BMS and everything on the inside. So I definitely don't question it in that regards when it comes to, you know, the quality of this build. And like I say, I give it a 10 out of 10. If you guys are out, in the, you know, looking in the market for a lithium iron phosphate battery and you want one that's, you know, uh, cheaper than other ones potentially, but still give you the kind of performance that you're looking for, lie time's the way to go, 100%. So if you enjoy this type of content though, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks for watching, yeah? Cheers.